Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we are going to be studying the wall of thorax. As you all know, we have finally started the thoracic cavity and today we're going to cover the main important parts of the boundaries of the thorax. And more specifically, we'll be talking about muscles of your wall of thorax. Before I get started, I would like you to know that there are about nine intercostal spaces anteriorly and 11 intercostal spaces posteriorly. The intercostal spaces are the spaces between the adjacent ribs. So anteriorly there are nine of these spaces while posteriorly there are 11. And apart from this there are a certain amount of muscles that are covering the thoracic cavity like uh, the ones we studied in the upper limb and these were the pectoralis major, trapezius, serratus anterior, pectoralis minor, the latissimus dorsi, rhomboids etc. And also there are some muscles of the abdomen that cover the thorax. These are the rectus abdominis, external oblique and certain muscles of the back like the rectus spinae. These are also covering the thorax. However, when we talk about the thoracic wall proper, which is solely the muscles of the thorax that are only involved in carrying out actions for your breathing, those are the muscles that we will be studying today. So what are these muscles? There are about three of these muscles and they are the external intercostal, internal intercostal and finally the transversus thoracis muscle. Today we will be studying these muscles, their origins, insertions and some more important facts related to them. So these are the muscles that run between the spaces of your rib or they run in the intercostal spaces, closing the intercostal spaces so that when you breathe, these spaces do not get drawn in and out, in and out. So let's go ahead and start with the first muscle. This is the external intercostal muscle. It begins from, if you all remember, I have taught you all the structure of the rib. Posteriorly was the head, neck and the tubercle. So the external intercostal muscle begins from the tubercle and it goes all the way to the costochondral junction of your rib. That's the ex extent of the external intercostal muscle along the rib. And the extent that lies between the intercostal space, which is also known as its origin and insertion, that is basically it is originating from the lower border of the rib above. It gets inserted in the outer lip of the rib below in its upper border. So if you guys remember, the rib has an upper and a lower border. The upper border consists of an outer, outer and an inner lip. So the external intercostal gets originated from the lower border of the rib above and gets inserted into the outer lip of the upper border of the rib below. Pretty simple. What is the direction of the fibers of external intercostal muscle? They come from behind, forward so. It's downwards, forwards and medially. So DFM is the basically the direction of the fibers of the external intercostal muscle. When it reaches the costochondral junction, however, it loses its memory and from the costochondral junction till the sternum, it becomes the external intercostal membrane. So the muscle portion ends at the costochondral junction after which the external intercostal muscle continues as the external intercostal or the anterior intercostal membrane. Now let's talk about a muscle that is completely opposite to the external intercostal muscle. Of note is that if I carry out a dissection in the chest wall, First comes skin, superficial fascia, deep fascia, and then come the muscles of basically the upper limb that was pectoralis major and minor and the serratus anterior, etc. After that, the thoracic cage, the first muscle that you'll see outside will be the external intercostal muscle. That's why it's known as the external. And when you take off the external intercostal muscle, that's when you'll see the internal intercostal muscle. And even more deep to that comes the transversus thoracis. So let's talk about the next muscle, which is the internal intercostal muscle. So this is going to be completely opposite of the external intercostal muscle. How? Well, its uh, extent is basically, its horizontal extent or the rib extent is basically that it begins from the, the anterior part. Hence, it begins from the lateral border of the sternum, which was on the contrary in external intercostal that was beginning posteriorly. It goes all the way till the angle of your rib. When it comes to the angle of the rib, 
Now this right over here at the angle of the rib, it continues as the internal intercostal membrane posteriorly. Hence, now we know that the external intercostal muscle becomes the intercostal membrane anteriorly while internal intercostal muscle becomes the intercostal membrane posteriorly. The internal intercostal muscle basically forms the posterior intercostal membrane and external intercostal forming the anterior intercostal membrane. Apart from this, its origin is that it originates from the floor of the costal groove that we've discussed in the previous video of the ribs. Floor of the costal groove is where it originates from and it gets inserted in the, obviously if this was the outer lip, this gets inserted in the inner lip of the upper border of the rib below. So they're complete opposites. The directions of internal intercostal fibers are obviously going to be going posteriorly, hence it's downwards backwards because this was forwards this is going backwards so backwards and laterally so that is another difference between them two so they're kind of like opposite uh, muscles their fibers run completely at right angles to one another then we have the transversus thoracic muscle the transversus thoracic muscle has basically three parts the three parts that it has are basically known as the subcostalis, the intercostalis intimi, and finally the sternocostalis. The direction of fibers of the transversus thoracis are similar to the internal intercostal muscle. These are the downwards, backwards, and laterally. First, let's talk about our first part of your transversus thoracis muscle. This is the subcostalis. The subcostalis basically originates from the inner surface of the rib near its angle it gets inserted into the inner surface of the two or three ribs below. So it's important to remember that subcostalis is basically lying in the lower ribs mostly. Then we have the intercostalis intimi. The intercostalis intimi gets originated from the ridge above the costal groove of the rib. If you guys remember, I explained this in my ribs bone video. That's where it originates from and below it gets inserted to the inner lip just like that of internal intercostal muscle, the inner lip of the upper border of rib below. And finally we have the sternocostalis which we studied in the sternum. The sternocostalis is basically going to be involved in the upper ribs. It basically originates from the posterior surface of the xiphoid process of the body of the sternum in its lower part and from the uh, costal cartilages, lower co costal cartilages, and it gets inserted above to the second to sixth costal cartilages. So that was about the transversus thoracis. All of these muscles have a single nerve supply and the nerve supply of all of these muscles is the intercostal nerve. Apart from this, the action of these muscles is basically first function that I already explained that it prevents the in drawing of ribs when there is inspiration and out drawing of the ribs when there is expiration. The ac other actions include the elevation of ribs which is done by the external intercostal muscle and the intercondral portion of the internal intercostal muscle during inspiration. The intercondral portion when I talk about means the portion that lies between the costal cartilages. Moreover, the transversus thoracis and the rest of the internal intercostal muscle apart except its intercondral portion is responsible for bringing the ribs back to its original position in expiration. In the next lecture, I will talk more about the intercostal nerve, its course, origin and termination. So thank you so much for watching.